Introducing the pneumatized air sac system. Do you have ambitions of growing big and ruling the world, but conventional anatomy is holding you back? Well, fear not. The pneumatized air sac system is here to make your dreams a reality. Multi-purpose, performance enhancing. You'll be the envy of every mammal in the shadows. Don't get stuck in a rock like a dead trilobite, regretting what you didn't do in your short time on this earth. It's your key to the future, from the past. So, here's the pitch. Saurischian dinosaurs and flying pterosaurs were rigged up with a network of inflatable air pouches inside their bodies, including the bones. It was connected to the lungs and had multiple parts to play in taking these critters to the top of their respective ecosystems. Now, obviously the story of natural history is a long and complicated one, so it'd be foolish to pin their success on one isolated factor. They had a bunch of adaptations that let them thrive through the Mesozoic, but the Essex system seems to be their secret weapon, a hidden superpower, if you will. Firstly, they made breathing way more efficient. Air that was inhaled filled the lungs as well as the air sac. Once oxygen is diffused from the lungs into the bloodstream, the animal exhales, and air from the secondary balloons fills the lungs on its way out. So even when they were exhaling, dinosaurs and pterosaurs were constantly absorbing oxygen. This is a huge biological advantage. Oxygen's an essential part of basic body chemistry, so by bumping up their intake, dinos and dactyls could get more energy out of less food, exert their muscles for longer, grow and heal quickly, and maybe belt out some power ballads. <laughs> Being energy efficient is step one in letting Pangaea superstars get really big, but there are still limitations. Gravity can be a cruel mistress. So how did two-story pterosaurs get airborne? And how did towering titanosaurs not collapse under the weight of their ample but firm backsides? Well, by having their skeletons propped up from the inside by pressurized air pockets, they could drop some of that excess bone mass without losing structural integrity. So even though the biggest dinosaurs could easily measure up to the biggest whales, they were less than half the weight. The biggest pterosaurs could easily look a giraffe in the eye, but they were barely a quarter of the weight, just light enough for their powerful wings to get them off the ground. So that's step too, but once you start reaching megafauna tier, you run into another problem. Heat management. Being big means you have a tiny surface area to volume ratio, so there's a lot of space for heat to loiter around inside the body and not a lot of ways for it to get out. This is why elephants have those big radiator ears. So how do giant dinosaurs not cook from the inside? Once again, the trademark air sac system delivers. The animal inhales cool air from its surroundings, the air makes its way around the body, picks up heat as it goes, and the hot air is exhaled. Voila! Biological air conditioning. But as with any organ system, there's always the risk of something going wrong. Earlier this year, a research team from the States announced the discovery of a Jurassic sauropod whose neck vertebrae showed signs of scarring in the spots where these air sacs were located, consistent with some kind of respiratory disorder. For all intents and purposes, this dinosaur had a lung infection inside its spine. So, with the exception of horribly displaced diseases, if you want a demonstration of how adaptable and useful the air sac system is, look no further than the living branch of the dinosaur family. Modern birds still use this same air sac system. The very advantages that allow giant sauropods to become skyscraping behemoths now allow the birds to be masters of the sky. This is known as an exaptation, a body part left over from an ancestor that's been repurposed for something new. It's a testament to how economical and efficient evolution can be, and also the success of the dinosaurs. This is a point that can never be made enough. Dinosaurs are not extinct. They're still alive, unbelievable as that seems. They've just found a new place in the world, and they've done extremely well for it. Well done, dinosaurs. You've earned those seeds. Thank you for watching. Why not support this channel by pledging to its Patreon page? There's behind-the-scenes material, ad-free early access, and for top patrons like Carl Zuri Lou, a personal shout-out. Yes!